Thank you, Father Carney, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and my dear brothers. My family is pretty small compared to most people here. It's just my parents and my older brother. And while I'm technically not a cradle Catholic, I think I made it just in time to claim the title. <laughs> when the two of us were born, my parents had to figure out what they were going to do and how they were going to raise us. My dad was born into a large Catholic family, but my mom was not. She was raised into a Baptist family. Uh, so naturally, there was some division and some differing opinions on how they were going to bring us up, what faith they were going to uh, baptize us in. But my parents did what all people do when they don't agree on something. They just didn't talk about it, and that was that. <laughs> uh, well, fast forward about six years. My family fell on to some pretty hard financial times, and we had to move around a little bit. Uh, but it finally worked out. We moved to where we live now in good old Fenton, Michigan. Uh, and it's only about three miles from the local parish. Uh, it's a pretty small parish on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's only about two or three hundred families, uh, and it's just a nice place. Uh, I don't know what happened, but when we moved, my dad had finally convinced my mom to go to church one Sunday. So the family got ready, and we went off to church. Uh, that was really the first time I'd ever been to church, because that was just something we didn't do growing up other than when we would take my grandma to church on Sundays when she was getting older and my dad and his siblings took turns taking her to church. Uh, but we finally went, the four of us as a family, and my mom fell in love. Uh, it was a really small community. It was, it was really tight-knit. Uh, everyone was extremely friendly. Uh, and so after that Sunday, my parents decided to go back, and uh, we, we just kept going back the next Sunday the next Sunday. Uh, well, after a little while, my mom entered RCIA, and my brother and I entered the kid version of RCIA, whatever that's called. Uh, well, finally, in 2007, at the Easter Vigil, my mom, my brother, and I were brought into the church. I certainly didn't think so at the time, but that night would change my life forever. A short time after my family was fully received into the church, my mom went crazy and turned herself into one of those church ladies, you know the type. <laughs> We were always at the parish. We were helping, you know, set up for this event or that event, uh, especially the infamous chicken barbecue in late August. Uh, we were always at the building. I mean, I really cannot stress that enough. Uh, and at first, it wasn't that much fun. I mean, what seven-year-old wants to be at church helping set up for the soup and pie social? No, thank you. Uh, however, as I started to get older and into my middle and high school years, everything started to change. My outlook was much different when I had to be at the parish helping set up for various events or various, helping with various ministries. Uh, it started to become a shift of things I have to do that my parents were making me do to things that I looked forward to doing, things I really desired to do. Uh, and I really didn't have the terminology at the time when I started to desire these things but it was really an experience of encountering people and forming relationships that I had never experienced before. Um, and through that, also experiencing the Lord in a way I had never really known before. Um, so I started to get involved with youth group. I started to get involved with faith formation. I started to altar serve, uh, and the list goes on. Well, when I was, uh, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> when a lot, yeah. Uh, when a lot of guys tell their vocation story, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, a very specific moment in prayer uh, when they're at a Souvenville conference or a parish retreat, and those are certainly good things. I did all that kind of stuff, and I loved it. It brought me an incredible amount of joy and peace. Uh, but when I was in my, when I was in high school, and I was a junior and senior in high school, and I had to start thinking about, you know, what's next, and everyone's, you know, all the teachers, all the staff members like, okay, everybody, you know, it's college week, we have to apply for college, what are you going to do, what's going to be the next step? Uh, for me, it wasn't that hard. Um, I simply looked at my parish and how much I loved it. I loved the people, the relationships, the service, the sacrifice. I saw my priest and how much he loved being a priest and ministering to people, and that was it. I simply saw the regular life of parish ministry, and I fell in love. I could see myself doing all those beautiful things, and through the, some discernment and prayer, I felt the Lord calling me to seminary. In short, my brothers, my entire vocation story could be summed up into simply saying that I fell madly in love with the Lord 
and his people. I don't know if the Lord is calling me to be a priest, but I certainly hope he does. And if he does, I cannot wait to be a part of a parish family to give and receive the love of Jesus. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.